Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday and happy International Girls in ICT Day 2017. Thank you for joining this webinar. Today, we celebrate the work of international community in ICT, but also the work in, of multiple NGOs and international organizations around the world, the work with the girls who would love to expand their career in ICT. We would like to have this webinar to talk a little bit more about ICT, about why girls should be an active members and maybe some challenges that we have currently on the market. But at the beginning, I would like to remind everyone that International Girls in ICT Day is an opportunity for girls and young women to see and experience technology in a whole new light. The initiative, backed by ITU member states, aims to create a global environment that empowers and encourages girls and young women to consider careers in the growing field of information and communication technologies. Today, we celebrate girls and we celebrate women who are in these fields and we would like to have a frank discussion about what we can do more, each of us at the community level, personal level, organization level, to expand the field and to uh, maybe decrease the gap existing uh, in, in this sector. And, you know, while we say that it's a commemoration day, it's also important to flip a little bit the question and to ask ourselves, is it really a celebration? Gender gaps are widening and existing data shows that women are 14% less likely than men to own a mobile phone and that 25% fewer women and girls are online compared to men and boys. Research also indicates that in Africa, over 40% of women are not able to effectively engage with ICT tools for personal and professional activities. Yet, there are vast gains to win from changing this. Intel reports uh, in 2013 that enabling Internet access for 150 million women would contribute an estimated 13 to 18 billion to the annual GDP of 144 developing countries. And data going on. So today, it's really about discussion, about questions, about answers, and me, Diana will be moderating this session and I will be happy to take all the questions from you, the um, uh, wonderful Empower Women and you and Women friends and members of our community and to address and to discuss together with our very, very dear to our heart panelists. So, without any further ado, let's go to agenda, and it's very simply. We'll have some greetings and introduction, we'll go with the first presentation, and then with a second presentation, and we will have an intervention. Afterward, it will be less of a presentation, but more on the explicatory note, and then we will take some Q&As, and we'll be happy to explain and to discuss all these challenges that we have today um, on, on the uh, on the current status of girls in ICT day. And I don't want to be negative, but I wanted to have uh, both parts of uh, the equation here on the table and let's be frank and discuss all of that and take it forward. And remember, if you have any questions during a webinar, you can enter your question into the questions pane for the organizer or panelists to answer. I am promising to keep all of them and to um, kind of select in a bunch and uh, we will take it one by one. And without any further ado, I propose to go to our first panelist, and um, uh, it's one of our dear friends, Amira from Mozilla, Mozilla Foundation, and um, well, she leads uh, for women and web literacy at the Mozilla Foundation, which focuses on uh, providing an accessible, safe, open, and innovative web for women. She's 
just a smiley person, very enthusiastic, very active. She knows how to drive change in the community uh, within the Mozilla Foundation and beyond. And I'm happy to have uh, Amira as a panelist today and uh, we hope you will enjoy the presentation. And uh, we are curious all Amira to know more about Mozilla Foundation work. So welcome and um, without any further comments, I'll just give you the presentation presentation role so you can take on and share more about your work. Thank you, Diana. Uh, I'm just going to make sure uh, I can show you my screen. Yes, Here. we can see it now. Yes. Okay. And it, um, does this work? Can you see my presentation? Not yet, but if you will make it full screen, yes. Okay. Let's see if this works. How does that work? Yes. Perfect. We can see it now. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm, I'm really happy to be here. And happy International Girls in ICT Day 2017. Um, I'm really excited to share some programs that I've done along the way in the past uh, few years that have really allowed me to, um, myself and my teammates, to learn how we can develop inclusive learning spaces for girls that really can help enrich their knowledge in ICT. Um, and so thank you very much for the awesome introduction, Diana. Um, I, I'm really excited to share more about Mozilla and what I'm doing there. Um, Diana mentioned I'm the lead for Women in Web Literacy. And so some of you might know Mozilla, but what we are trying to do is create a healthy internet. And a healthy internet means an internet that is uh, supportive and fair and open and accessible and safe and comfortable and innovative for everyone. Um, and this means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Um, but there are two specific uh, realms in which I really try to create a healthy internet in my work. And so the first thing is being able to um, learn and teach with everyone. And so this is really making sure that the millions upon billions of people that are getting mobile devices in their hands for the first time in many years, um, that they're, they actually have the skills and know-how to be able to use those devices that they know what the internet is, that they know how to optimize this technology, that they can actually be able to um, adapt their world to uh, and the skills that they learn to be able to go further with this. And then the, uh, the second one is really making room for everyone online. Um, and this is really called digital inclusion in the worlds in which I work in. Um, but it's really making sure that as we have more people online, um, that we're actually providing a safe and comfortable space for them to actually be able to participate to their full capacity. Um, and so in the work that I do, you're really able to see uh, women as being a place where we really want to make an inclusive uh, internet that is for women, um, where they can participate and feel comfortable uh, and engage to their full capacity, but also that they have the skills in order to do so. Um, and in the last few years, uh, a few years now, I've really been running and organizing a program that I call Mozilla Clubs. And so Mozilla Clubs are ongoing events that teach how to read, write, and participate on the web in inclusive and engaging ways. And so people in their local communities are able to gather around, whether it's in libraries and schools and community spaces and in labs, wherever it might be, um, and they run, whether it's weekly or bi-weekly or monthly sessions, that really teach the core of web literacy. So that's how to read, write, and participate. Um, and they're, they're creating spaces that are comfortable, that are engaging, that are fun for people to share and ask questions. Um, and they're using curriculum that, that we have at Mozilla that is free and it's open and educator tested, that builds the core web literacy skills. Um, and, and we've really been working with this community to build these local networks and then participate in this global network that we have of Mozilla Clubs around the world. And so after a few years, we have over 500 Mozilla Clubs in hundreds of cities everywhere. Um, and like I mentioned, in the spaces they range in, they also range in who they target and what they do. And each one is really unique and different. And so we're really excited to have grown and created this program over the years. And then about uh, a year, a little over a year ago, we met with UN Women and we said, what if we create these programs for just women and girls? Uh, what if we could do this in a space that was friendly and comfortable and really facilitate the learning, um, technical learning of women and girls? And so we created in 2016 the Mozilla Clubs for Women and Girls program, 
where we launched 20 Mozilla Clubs in Kenya and South Africa, and we really focused on a peer woman to girl learning module. Um, and we really focus on uh, building skill levels of local leaders who would go out into the community and they would actually teach these web literacy skills and build their own skills as well as develop the skills of other people. And together with having very concentrated groups in these two areas, we were able to build local networks in those areas. So networks are places where uh, these communities were able to support each other, collaborate with each other, um, have shared experiences, and connect with each other in different ways. Um, and since our launch in early 2016, we actually had about 30 additional people raise their hands and say, I want to do this program too. Um, so we have communities around the world, uh, from Mexico to Gambia, of women and girls that are doing similar movements of training and teaching young leaders to go out and teach the web to local communities. And so this was a really exciting program for us. Um, and we, we've seen it go from young girls to older women, uh, and I'm going to take you through a couple case studies now. So uh, one of the case studies is Poziza, who's a club captain who studies information systems at University of Western Cape. Uh, and she runs her Mozilla club in the Western Cape focused on high school girls. And she does this at a high school that she used to go to. Um, so not only does she get to take the skills that she's learning in her school now, she gets to go and give back to the community of where she's from. Um, in the community and in, the, in her club, she uses mobile devices, which focus really learning this key digital skills, um, growing confidence, providing role models, information on technology, um, and what it, what it means to be safe online for these high school girls that are using mobile smartphones. Um, you know, in her role, Paziza really uh, acts as a role model, but also allows people to see and ask questions of what it's like to be a woman in technology, to study technology in school, um, and really works on empowering these local young women. And so the next one is Club Victory. And so this is a club in Kibera Slums, Nairobi, Kenya. And it focuses on teaching digital skills to young girls who have never used mobile smartphones or the computers. Um, so this is really dealing with a low, low uh, income um, and, you know, access area where we're teaching young girls uh, to learn the internet and computer for the first time and what it means to actually come online. And so this group is, is much younger than the group in the other club. So I think we're, we're looking at about nine years old to 14. Um, and then, uh, you know, this is really curating their experience, providing a safe community for them, um, and really building the confidence of these young girls. And so here at the bottom of the slide, you can see, um, you can see a, a quote from our club captain, who is Joy, who is a local leader in the community. Um, she says, a girl-focused club creates a relaxed and safe environment for the girls to share life experiences, complement each other's skills, and receive mentorship from their club captains, as well as others in the community. And so, based on these two examples, you can really see how Mozilla Clubs for Women and Girls is fostering these environments uh, for women and girls to learn ICT skills, get access to the community and the local network, and then build themselves. And so, we're really excited to continue working on this project here at Mozilla. Um, and, you know, we're, we're also really excited to be able to share a lot of our learnings on how this has worked and why it's worked, but also what have we learned along the way. And so today what I want to share with, with you, group of people, is, you know, how did we really curate um, the experiences for these young girls by developing inclusive learning spaces that set them up for success? And so I really want to take you through my, four of my main learnings that I've learned and um, the many points in them that really created these successful environments. Um, so the first one is it creating a four-woman, bi-woman model. Uh, the second one is having a trusted and comfortable learning environment. Uh, the third one is being able to put the learners first. And the fourth one is a network-focused learning approach. And I'm going to go through each one of these right now, one by one. So what do I mean when I say for women, by women? Well, this means that everything that is created, designed, and organized is created in a for women, and it's a by women mentality. Women know women best. Um, you know, it, you, we can go back to the early examples of the, uh, the car and the airbag when it was first developed. Uh, it was created by all men, and in such, when it was launched, um, you know, it actually resulted in the death and harm of a lot of women uh, because it was not designed and created uh, with women involved in the process. 
which meant that you know women who often are much shorter than men uh, were getting the airbag at a at a length and area that was not actually um, that was not safe for them. And so if we use that as an example, we understand that there's importance when we create and share and develop in a woman ecosystem. Um, and it's really important that when we're teaching women and girls, uh, we're providing women role models for them to look up to and understand and see in the community that can act as, as individuals as inspiration for young girls. We also know that women learn differently. Um, you know, this is, this is very key to having women teach women because as women learn and teach dif differently, we indirectly know what is, what is often um, better for women to, to teach and share in local communities. And so there's a lot of study that shows that women, um, or sorry, girls actually lead best when they're given roles. So whether you're in an environment where, you know, you have someone who's the note taker, you have someone who um, uh, is the questioner or, uh, you know, is the listener or is the facilitator, giving women and girls roles in communities and when they're learning actually help facilitate their learning and set them up for greater success. And so, you know, if we engage with women in the ways that they're most comfortable with, and we also engage in a for women by women model, we're learning that we're able to create a much more comfortable, successful learning space. The next one is being able to have a trusted and comfortable learning environment. Um, and you know, just at the basic, basic level, this is having a safe location and environment for girls to come and access so that they're able to feel safe once they're there and they're able to come in a safe environment. Um, and you know, this can also be helped and, and supported by very early communication to people attending events that has them uh, equipped with all the information they would need to know about the space and location in the event that makes them feel even more comfortable even before the event. And so they're coming in with that sort of vibe. Um, and then we also want to learn and teach in small groups. So most Mozilla clubs range in uh, teaching 20 girls or younger. Um, and sometimes they are often uh, 20 girls or less. And oftentimes there are a lot less. Um, but even if you have a group of 20 or less, you want to really be able to break out those groups into small groups so that women are actually able to um, participate and ask questions and feel more comfortable and, you know, maybe get an opportunity to have more of those roles we talked about before. As well, we also have our club captains and young leaders always starting with codes of conduct to actually start the groups and the learning and environment off on the right pace. So this creates an inclusive space from the beginning and makes people feel the most comfortable, so sets the tone in any sort of situation you're in. And the last one is really being able to create an open and adaptable agenda. So this is everything from being able to just leave space in the agenda for questions, having people come in and be able to remix and share things that they have that is different, but also just leaving room for women to determine where they want to go with projects and environments and questions and programs. The next one, and I, I can't stress how important this is, is really being able to put the learner first. Um, so many of our clubs that we have found are the most successful. Uh, they not only focus on local issues that women care about and think are important. So this could be anything about, um, you know, what, what do women uh, care about in their local community? So health care, access to um, education, uh, teen pregnancy, or anything along those realms, and how can we develop technical solutions for these type of issues. So it focuses on the stuff that they really care about. But it also works with these girls and women to say, how can we build and create things that are important to you and that really make you understand why ICT is important in your world? Um, and so this is letting them build, create, and share what's important to them, but actually get a, a broad grasp over where they are in terms of ICT and what are the opportunities for them in ICT. More, more predominantly, we're seeing ICT skills be important in all aspects of industries everywhere. So whether they want to, um, you know, own a shop, they want to have a food store, um, they want to do marketing in their community, it's really important for us to be able to show them how ICT skills can help benefit them in the stuff that they care about. And then the last one is being able to have a network-focused approach. And so in all of these communities, we're really working on emphasizing creating a network. So a network is being able to be surrounded by peers and people around you, as well as mentors and role models. 
Um, all of these people are together creating a network and we're helping individuals and young girls grow and develop their own networks as well. So their mentors and role models are going to be able to be there if they have questions, if they want to um, get inspired, if they have, uh, they want to be able to connect and grow their community and their network. Um, but also on the, on the shorter level is really being able to connect with their peers, having a support group of young girls just like them that are wanting to celebrate and get involved in activities and really do things with them that can actually help foster this learning even more. Um, and then also just the mentality of being able to have girls supporting girls. This is something we really try to encourage in our communities and so often around the world is not often, is not um, leveraged enough is how we can support each other as women and girls. And so we really want to build a community that really fosters that from the beginning with very collaborative and participatory programs and projects that get girls in the framework of we need to work together to be able to achieve what we want to do. And so those are the four main takeaways that I have for you. There's many more. Um, but th those are the big ones on how we can really create these inclusive learning spaces as we move forward in teaching women and girls in ICT. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, and so if you go to mzl.la slash WWL, you can actually be taken to a site which teaches you more about Mozilla Clubs for Women and Girls, you can access our gender-focused resources, um, which include a bunch of curriculum that I've developed and others in our network have developed that really focuses and emphasizes how girls learn in, in curriculum in ICT, um, as well as reports and articles and some of our community that's available there. Uh, so you're welcome to visit that, and I will be available for questions after. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass it back to you, Diana. Thank you so much. I am taking over right now. It's a bit more. Please let me know if you can see my screen now. Just a confirmation will be fine. So thank you so much, Amira, uh, for a wonderful and insightful presentation about some activities, uh, especially about the Mozilla Clubs, around the Mozilla Clubs model. Um, I, I find it very, very, very interesting that, you know, we speak about the role models and uh, you touched upon uh, the, the questions of security and uh, um, about sustainability and about how we support each other in the community and beyond that and also you touched I mean so many so many points and but a lot of them it's kind of a connection with the, the, the uh, challenges what are opportunities that we have and either we put the question marks or equal marks between these two and um, our our friends and members and you know those who are tuned in today they know that here at you and women empower women we are dedicated to empowering women to achieve their full economic potential. When women and girls are empowered, we do believe that the world is more prosperous, healthy, and peaceful. And this is not just words, but we have data that uh, supports these points. For example, today, five out of ten workers globally are women, right? By the 20, 23rd, one billion women will enter into the workplace. So, yet the majority of women have insecure jobs where they uh, earn an average of 25% less than men, and most of them are doing the unpaid work. So, uh, with everything you 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 mentioned about the work in the, in the clubs and um, around the, the four important lessons that you took over. Um, I was just uh, um, curious to know more about these footprints. How then um, girls who already participated in the community trainings and around the clubs uh, uh, you mentioned about club uh, captains uh, or, you know, those who are already receiving a formal training from Mozilla, how they take it forward? Um, do they uh, become involved as volunteers? Do they form uh, some kind of activities uh, also um, to drive change in their community? Um, it will be curious to take this question right now. And also we have one more immediate question for your presentation. 
So um, Dubese is asking what measures of inclusiveness has Mozilla takes to internal young women in the company? And then we have other more, but I think it's uh, something that is immediate to the presentation. And then we will take it during Q&A, the next questions. And also Rosemary is thanking you for the work you do in Kenya. And she will be curious to know if this model of Club Mozilla um, is, uh, is replicable and something can be done in the rural areas of Kenya. Uh, she is um, ready to collaborate in this matter. Back to you, Amira. There's, that was so many questions. Thank you. I hope I'm able to answer them all um, and remember all the questions. Uh, so I'll start, I'll start with the basic. It's just that anyone can run a Mozilla Club for women and girls. Um, in fact, if this is something that resonates with you or you're really wanting uh, to access our resources and structure um, through the work you're doing, please do join us. Uh, share and support with the community. We have a broad network of, of women and girls who are wanting to do this and be able to learn from you as well. Uh, so if you go to the site WWL, or sorry, mzl.la slash WWL, you can find a link to register there, um, and we can help support get you off the ground. Uh, we do have this in, in many areas, including rural areas. So we have it in uh, western Nairobi um, in many places, and we work with communities, and we have a lot of resources for areas that are low access, so meaning they don't necessarily have um, high ability of uh, resources or tools or internet, so we have a lot of offline modules and courses and, and curriculum as well. Um, and so that, that's one. The, the second one is just that with our, our learners who are in the program, um, we've, been, we've been tracking some of them, but since we, we piloted this last year, we're, we're only starting to really see the, the breadth of where they're able to go with this type of learning. And so um, you know, just from conversations with them, we've been able to capture that some women uh, never knew the potential to what ICT skills could do in their world and how it could help them. Um, you know, whether it's uh, doing simple things like participating in uh, programs online or getting more learning for education or actually doing things that help support their businesses um, or sell their produce or things like that. And so we were finding them just to... Um, have more of a direction that is towards ICT, as well as the, the broader group of women and girls, or the girls in here that are starting to consider uh, education in ICT, or um, programs in ICT, or jobs in ICT for the first time ever that they would never have done before. Um, so that alone is pretty large for us. Uh, they are also doing other things, such as participating in other groups and programs around the world. So we have a lot of Mozilla clubs taking part in things like Creative Commons programs or Technovation programs. And so we're seeing them kind of fire start in, in their interest levels and then being able to continue developing their skills by participating in other programs and stuff. Um, or just bringing it into their other peers and connecting with others that they, they think might also resonate with this as well. Um, and then the last one was just that uh, Mozilla is really um, measuring we're measuring how we can help improve uh, women in ICT through really getting them the skills and confidence and creating more environments like this uh, that would make them most comfortable. Um, and so we're, we're slowly measuring towards that, but it really is, it really is our goal to create broader communities um, and professionals, women professionals, that are able to not just support the other women, but are able to continue advancing their career in ICT, getting access to programs and opportunities that allow them to go further and expressing and sharing the knowledge that they have. Um, and so with our, our work around creating a healthy internet, we really stress that um, we really want to capture the stories of women that are doing this in the, in the current uh, jobs and professions um, and see what we can do as Mozilla to help support and continue to grow their work as opposed to what, um, you know, they could do for us. Uh, we really want to continue being able to support these women where they are and being able to develop more of them. 
So I hope I answered all of them. Yes, you did. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Amira. Oh, and uh, I just wanted, I cannot uh, to, to highlight that it was a pleasure to collaborate with Mozilla Foundation on, on this project and we hope for further collaboration and also that empowerment champions participated, had an opportunity to participate in the training um, in Nairobi and what um, something maybe um, very, very surprising for them was that uh, to, to learn about the basic stuff of security, so cyber security, online communication, habits, and also etiquette, advocacy online, and uh, we were very happy to know that it was something useful for them, an activity that they, it's only, um, it wasn't only a fun weekend, but also was a uh, very useful and, uh, you know, uh, a educational activity and we are happy to tell you all that one of our champion Robert is still continuing to go to the slums in Kibera and teach on the volunteer basis uh, skills ICT skills to, to girls over there and, and to women and men everyone basically who needs to, uh, to, to take this um, uh, to, uh, and to learn these important skills so uh, we go next with a second presentation and it will be about Girls Go IT, Empower Young Women Through ICT in Moldova. Um, and I'm happy to invite now Michaela, Valeria and Paraskovia to let us know what are the efforts um, in expanding um, uh, um, everything about IT and uh, ICT uh, in Moldova and why it's important for them personally for the region. Michaela, back to you. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Diana. Um, first of all, uh, I would like to thank you and Women in Moldova for making our presence possible today in this webinar. And of course, I would like to thank you uh, and Women's Empower Women platform for organizing this webinar on this very special occasion today. And again, uh, happy Girls in ICT Day, everyone. And um, also congratulations for everyone who supports women empowerment in tech. Our presentation today, if we can uh, go to the next slide, it is, um, speaks about women empowerment and we are very happy that uh, today in this uh, panel we have two of um, our positive champions from Moldova, two young girls very active in ICT. Girls Go IT is a program implemented by TechEdu, a local based, a Moldovan based NGO which started uh, in 2015 um, um, with the partnership and continues until now with the partnership of UN Women in Moldova, the Moldovan Association of Private ICT Companies, the e-government center from Moldova and Novateca IREX. We are thankful for this partnership and actually this is the approach we take in Girls Go IT, meaning that we ensure a participatory platform for all institutions and entities in Moldova interested to support the agenda of economic empowerment of women in and through technologies. As, as said, Girls Go IT aims to develop the tech skills of young women in Moldova and uh, we are hoping that technologies and the education in, in tech will help young women in Moldova to be more empowered economically. Um, if we can move to, to the next slide. Girls Go IT is a program who, which started, as I mentioned, in 2015 and uh, this being the third year of our activity, we were able to expand, as you see on the right side, the map of Moldova, expand to 11 cities, 11 regions and, uh, of course, we, we hope um, in, in the years to come we will be able to, to grow more and more our network. At Girls Go IT, we believe in the power of people and in the power of network. Um, at Girls Go IT, we develop women in tech. We call them ambassadors, ambassadors of Girls Go IT. Our ambassadors are young leaders who successfully empower other young women in their local communities through ICT-based events or projects. We are also putting a very uh, big emphasis in our work on the importance of being very accessible and inclusive. So that is why since 2015, we have worked with girls from ethnic minorities, girls with, from Roma community in Moldova, 
girls with locomotive disabilities and girls um, who are victims of domestic violence or victims of migration. Uh, we will continue and with the support of UN Women and other program partners, we will continue to fight for, for the cause. Um, why I'm very proud to be here today on, on this day, it's, it's more because uh, we have uh, Valeria and Paraskovia joining this uh, webinar. Valeria and Paraskovia are, as, as mentioned and as described, ambassadors of what means um, technologies uh, and empowerment of young women in Moldova. So I would I would happy pass the, the stage to Valeria. Thank you very much. Hello everyone and uh, happy Girls Day in ICT. My name is Valeria. I am Girls Go IT Ambassador in Stefan Vodza, Moldova. I'd like to share with you my experience of a girl in IT. My life has changed from the moment I joined to this uh, project. Before it, I had no idea what programming is or how web works and stuff like that. And of course, I believe that IT is typical to boys. When for the first time I get involved in this, all those stereotypes had disappeared step by step and I realized that each girl or woman is capable to develop her abilities in this domain. Due to Girls Go IT, I got a lot of experience and discovered something new for myself. Also, this project gave me the opportunity to meet other girls who had such interest in IT as me and were not afraid to step on an unknown field. With my team from Stefan Wode, I won an internship at FFW Agency in Moldova. This gave me the chance to see how is it to work in an IT company. All I want to say is that uh, it was amazing and I just could not believe that I am capable to create a website. Now I am organizing a boot camp in my region with uh, Girls Go IT support and I'm trying to motiv motivate other girls to join it. Girls Go IT is a real chance to discover yourself and I believe that it will go up year by year and I will motivate girls to get involved in IT. It already have changed the situation for girls of my age and I'm sure that for the future more people will be interested to support this project and more girls and women will be part of it. Thank you very much. So I think Paraskova can continue the discussion. Hello everyone, I'm Paraskova. I am Girls Go on the uh, Girls Go IT Ambassador from OK and I want to share with you my story. So I participated in Girls Go IT Summer Camp because I am interested in computer programming and technology. It was one of the hardest camps I went to because of the full schedule and my experience in computer programming. My first moment when I really started to enjoy coding was when during the camp I finally understood the basics of coding and saw the result of my first code. I was so captivated that all day along I was just trying to improve my code. So I learned a lot and succeeded to build my website. After the summer camp I became more interested in IT and get involved in other projects related to IT. I tried to share that experience with other girls as an ambassador, ambassador of Girls Go IT or Hay. In the local club in Hay. I'm implementing a project to inform about opportunities and motivate the girls to choose a career in IT. I have already organized two informational sessions for 40 students in the local public library and in my local school, where students find out more from the trainers about the benefits of being involved in IT. Soon, we plan to organize a bootcamp in RHA for four weeks, where more girls will learn how to code. I believe that this bootcamp can provide girls with the ability how to overcome new challenges so at the end they will become familiar with technologies. Girls Go IT project offers a variety of resources, mentors and curriculum for participants. Give support in organizing events and trainings to motivate girls to choose a career in IT and their active implication in decision making. I also participated in Technovation Challenge 2016, a business and IT competition for girls, which encourages girls to code and build a mobile application. And my team managed 
to take a second place at the national level. Even though we didn't win the Technovation Challenge, it was an excellent opportunity for me to learn how to overcome the difficulties of teamwork and inspired to like technologies. Experience with Girls Go IT and Technovation Challenge motivated me to become an entrepreneur in technologies and open my own business for, of modern technologies in Moldova. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, girls. Uh, you know, I at this point, I, I need to recognize uh, Moldova is my native country, um, and I'm so proud uh, that uh, so many interesting activities are developed uh, being over time. And uh, I, uh, I would love to jump in and to join this uh, fun informational and educational activities. And I would like to um, give a special thank you to Mihaela, who is the driver and the president of TECADU organization implementing the Girls Go IT in Moldova. And uh, obviously, with more than 10 years of experience in working with NGO so sector in Moldova, um, Mihaela is devoted to serve a cause of women empowerment and through technologies in, specific, uh, in, in speciality. And also, it's just because of, you know, this is the future and the data is speaking about it uh, by itself. Today, 90% of jobs require some digital capa uh, capacities. About 257 million fewer women are online than men. Only 80% of undergraduate computer science degree holders and 26 of computing jobs are held by women. At this point, I would like to ask Mihaela, how important is the work um, to KEDU and, you know, the, the uh, Girls Go IT initiative is important for Moldova, but also more from the regional perspective, from Eastern Europe. Uh, how, uh, this is some five, six years changing ahead, and how do you believe all these efforts will, um, will contribute to the changing world of work in the region and globally? Thank you, Diana, for, for the question. Um, Indeed, um, I believe um, IT sector, if I have to speak specifically about Moldova, IT sector is actually one of um, the only se growing sectors in, in Moldova. This is why I think we have a high time opportunity to use uh, technologies to make lives better and also to, to ensure a better economical, social future for our country. Um, we are lucky, on the other hand, in Moldova, uh, especially in our work uh, in, in the regions, to be able to have um, a very good internet connectivity. And also, if, you look into, if uh, we look into the statistics in Moldova, we, we have an average of two um, devices per capita in Moldova, which is actually an asset to take into consideration, understanding that the resources are there, so what we need to do is actually to, to understand specific the needs of young people in, in terms of learning, in terms of empowerment, and be able to be there in all regions in Moldova to make sure that the, the, the usage of, of the assets um, brings a, a positive impact in, in the life of young people and young women specifically. We have noticed um, throughout our work um, um, together with our program partners since 2015. Uh, with Girls Go IT, um, we always put the, the efforts to be out there in, in the regions um, as, as local as possible, empowering local communities. And um, we, we really noticed, and um, Valeria and Paraskovia are, are two of the, the about more than 100 examples that we have of young women who are driving um, te technologies in Moldova for young women fervor. So I just believe it's, um, we do have a very perfect environment in Moldova um, to, to be able to, to develop technologies and, and that's what we stand for. Thank you.
Thank you, Michaela. And um, we get, we have some compliments uh, going back to uh, the youth ambassadors. Um, and uh, Beryl is uh, saying, great work, Michaela. And uh, uh, Sister Zepp is um, referring to Paraskovia work. You are true inspiration, dear Paraskovia. And indeed, um, uh, Paraskovia and, um, and uh, um, uh, Valeria, you are becoming uh, role models in your community. Do you feel this? Do you feel that the message you are bringing in, uh, in your personal capacity is helping you? And do you believe that being a part of this uh, um, you know, community, Girls Go IT, help you to see um, differently the opportunities you have for, for the future um, education or employment. I understand you have a lot of emotions, but if you can quickly, um, in one sentence, uh, tell us about this, we, it will be greatly appreciated. Valeria? Uh, yes, I'm here. Well, I can say that uh, by being ambassador in Stefan Wode, it is uh, a lot of responsibility and uh, I'm very thankful to Girls Go IT that I had this opportunity to motivate other girls and I think this, this is very important that uh, young girls should know that they uh, should have more courage to get involved in IT and to develop their abilities. I think that this is very important and I hope uh, you all grow with this. Thank you. Thank you. Valeria Paraskovia? I think that uh, Girls Go IT is a very good opportunity for me because I just want to develop myself in different domains. And before Girls Go IT, I really didn't know what to do with my life, like what uh, career I can choose. And uh, joining Girls Go IT, I found what I want to do in my life, uh, what's important. and at the same time, I found a way how to uh, how to help my country to develop for it, and uh, just how to help other people. So, uh, as an ambassador, I'm trying to do the best of, of I can to do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank uh, you, Paraskovia. You definitely do. You definitely do. And uh, I would just um, have only one one thing to uh, to add to all of this discussion is that to become a champion of something is not an easy job, but it um, it's it's to triple the effect and sometimes to multiply it in a different levels, uh, horizontally and vertically. And um, here at UN Women, uh, we do believe that uh, becoming a champion for women economic empowerment, to lead and engage in results and goal-oriented projects to make a positive change in women's and uh, men life, and uh, it's very important. And uh, we encourage everyone who have a capacity to do that and who discover for themselves that this is something that they love to do, to do it, to try, to give this opportunity for themselves and for those around them. Thank you so much. And the last comment to the, this presentation is great presentation. Keep up your good work uh, from Rosemary. Um, we will uh, move with, uh, with a special guest today. Um, and uh, uh, we are joined today by Lucia Longcroft, head of the New York Office of the World Intellectual Property Organization organization uh, headquartered in Geneva and Australian national Lucinda joined WIPO in 1998 where she served as deputy director in the development sector and as a senior attorney in the copyright and electronic commerce division of WIPO. Yeah. Lucinda's work focuses on the management and use of intellectual property uh, for economic, social and cultural de uh, development. It's just um, a wonderful uh, uh, opportunity to have uh, Lucinda here, more importantly because uh, yesterday uh, the WIPO also celebrated the World Intellectual Property Day and uh, it's always interesting to connect the dots and to see what's, uh, what's the relation between ICT, science, innovation, technology, intellectual property, um, at the beginning so different and from one sense so close to us and um, it's 
it's also a very important and, and a very happy moment for us because together with UNESCO and WIPO, you and UMEN, um, uh, joint uh, efforts uh, and initiated a series of expert discussions focusing on the ways and means to close the gender gap throughout the cycle of science, technology and innovation with a particular focus on promoting women within these sectors. And uh, uh, we, we hope that uh, Lucinda will tell uh, a little bit about these two aspects. Uh, and uh, Lucinda, we will, uh, would like to extend you a welcome greeting. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me, Diana? Yes, perfectly. Thank you so much right. for being with us. It's my great pleasure and happy uh, International Girls in ICT Day to everyone on the webinar. Thank you. Um, so, Diana, thank you. Um, certainly, yes, the World Intellectual Property Organization, or, or WIPO, um, which is the specialized agency in the UN that deals with uh, creativity and innovation and the development of an international intellectual property system uh, for, for development, um, is certainly very much committed to, to the issues of um, innovation and of particularly through our work on gender and the promotion of women in the innovation system to helping to address issues and challenges and to support women and girls as they enter the, the creative and, and innovation ecosystem. Um, and it's interesting that you raise the, the connection between ICTs and innovation and intellectual property because it's not always obvious. Uh, not even to, to us necessarily working in the system, um, but nonetheless it is there. We obviously work very closely with the ITU and, and with those working on connectivity um, through our intellectual property mandate, uh, but um, in some ways you might think of the ICTs as being the framework or the, the conduit through which works of creativity can be passed. In fact, if you think of the internet and as one of the key parts of ICTs, what drives the, the rollout of broadband and of the internet is demand for content. And that may be content on uh, creative works, works of film and entertainment and, and other works that we crave around the world and, and want to share in terms of our cultures and our cultural output. Um, but it may also be uh, technical and informative works, works on health and medicine, for example, or works on agriculture, agricultural methodologies, or fisheries, or many of the issues that are related to sustainable development, where investment is made in developing content, creative content and technical uh, and innovative content, uh, with the expectation of return, and the intellectual property system is what makes it rewarding financially uh, to, and to create that content, which then, of course, it, it drives the interest in the content and, and is the interest in rolling out the connectivity in the ICTs. But in themselves, also, ICTs are works of innovation. Uh, software and uh, the technologies that, that make up the ICT system are all works. They're all created and innovated by women and, and men around the world, girls and boys, um, at all levels. Uh, so what WIPO does is to try and support that. Uh, we have a lot uh, of activities, about a fifth of our entire budget goes towards capacity building. We have 189 member states and so we work uh, throughout those member states to work directly with the, the women and men who are inventing and creating at that level. And particularly through our gender programs, we're looking at, at ensuring that we support um, the participation and, and, and work with governments to create enabling environments that will uh, help them to support their indigenous and national girls and women to enter the ICT workforce and, and to enable them to use ICTs as well as to innovate and create their own. So we do that through a number of different ways, uh, through uh, publicizing good practices, we, if you look on our on WIPO's website, which is at www.wipo.int, you'll see uh, in celebration, for example, of World Intellectual Property Day yesterday, numerous examples of women who have innovated uh, in different fields uh, to promote sustainable development and to improve lives. So we like to highlight those good practices and role models. We also have a WIPO Academy, which is our educational arm, which has um, many distance learning courses on, I think, over 80 different courses, and many of which are free 
to use and sign up to uh, globally from anywhere in the world and which address different parts and help to raise educational standards and awareness. We call it being IP smart or intellectual property smart. Know your intellectual property rights. Know you how, how you can use the intellectual property system uh, to benefit yourself and, and the community that, that you're in. Um, and in that Waikato Academy Distance the Learning Courses in 2016, over 24,800 women participated. Uh, and, uh, and, and these are many of them, in many cases, girls, people young in the education system who are using these resources, in many cases free resources, to, uh, to make themselves smart about ICTs and about uh, intellectual property. Um, we also have a, a chief economist who is working uh, on developing statistics uh, to and, and analysis, economic analysis to help policymakers to understand the importance of ensuring that, that girls and women have access to the innovation system, uh, particularly looking at how women participate as patenters and, um, and inventors, protecting their inventions through the patent system. Uh, and, and we bring that back down, not back down, but back through the ages to, to young uh, girls and women in schools. We have programs with cartoons and with uh, simply or age-appropriate uh, materials that help girls in schools to understand that they are creators themselves, that they are innovators and can be innovators, that they can protect their creations and innovation and use them in whatever way they wish to, to develop themselves or, or their communities to donate or give away to, to the world and public good at large or to use to, for economic good. Um, so we work with schools around the world uh, to, to develop that awareness as well. And then Diana, as you mentioned, we're very proud also to be collaborating with uh, UN Women and with UNESCO on our joint initiative, which is on uh, gender and, and the sustainable development goals. And in particular because this year, 2017, is the only year in which all the member states before, during the, the 2030 agenda or until the year 2030 when they seek to, to see how close we've come to reaching the goals set by the Sustainable Development Goals, this year alone they will be considering two of the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, SDG 5 and SDG 9. SDG 5, of course, which is on gender, and SDG 9, which is on innovation. So taking that particular connection uh, to this year, we've launched this joint initiative to look at how to close the gender gap to meet the SDGs by 2030. And, and that initiative is looking at the, the position of women and girls throughout the science, tech, and innovation cycle. So from STEM education with girls to uh, the, the role of women as, and girls as innovators in the patent system through to their employment in the, uh, the STEM fields, engineering, mathematics and science uh, and their leadership indeed of those fields. Uh, we're proud to collaborate with UNESCO on, on uh, their saga or STEM and gender advancement project for example and WIPO has developed a gender dictionary which allows us to identify uh, remote, uh, digitally who uh, on a patent application is a woman and who is a man, which is a very simple thing but was technically difficult to, to develop. So that contributes to our gaining the empirical evidence, the, the data and the statistical evidence to be able to persuade policymakers uh, of their progress in ensuring that girls at the STEM education level and then women in the innovation ecosystem are best represented. And for example, yesterday in the World IP Day, uh, event that we held at the United Nations headquarters in New York, uh, it was noted that China and the Republic of Korea are very much in the lead uh, with the number of, of innovators, uh, women innovators in, in the system, uh, whereas countries like the United States, for example, are lagging behind. And that economic analysis and, and data and the statistics are quite powerful when talking with policymakers. Uh, because they see where they are strong and where they are weak, and then they put resources commensurately into that. So this joint initiative, just to, to finish off, is, is um, a number of meetings. Uh, it's bringing together a community of experts around that. We started with an expert meeting here in WIPO in, in New York in, at, on March 30th uh, with about 25 
experts from private and public sectors to talk about how we get to 2030 and the future that we would like to see in terms of the position of girls and women in science, technology and innovation and uh, what policy steps need to be taken now to get there. Uh, this e-discussion that UN Women is so very well hosting uh, is part of this joint initiative. The World IP Day celebrations yesterday drew attention among the policymakers and member states to women in the innovation cycle and, and to girls. In fact, there was discussion of the Girl Scouts and how they are being involved in engaging girls in issues of, of innovation and, and ICTs. Uh, and we will then take those discussions forward further to raise awareness and to make sure that these issues stay high on the agenda of the member states as they work through the 2030 agenda and as they look to implement the Sustainable Development Goals and to ensure that the role of girls in ICTs and women in the innovation system is, is high in their minds as a priority. Thanks. Thank you so much, Lucinda, for giving us a very short overview, but very useful about the WIPO work. It's amazing how many publication and material, educational material, exists for free over there. And I invite uh, all the community, and uh, more specifically those who participate in this webinar today, to take a chance and just go and study, find these opportunities. Um, and um, sometimes, you know, we 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 looking for opportunities and we say we want to be engaged and they are just around the corner so please let's do that and of course um, uh, together with Lucinda we invite you all to participate in the UNESCO WIPO UN Human e discussion and to get this extremely important feedback from each of you, each and every one of you, so we can together put that report and ask member states about concrete measures and actions that they can implement at the governmental level in order to improve uh, the science, uh, technology, innovation, and so we can close this gender gap uh, until 2030. So um, for everyone to know, uh, as Lucinda mentioned, this is a series of steps that we are conducting together, but in particular the feedback, uh, all, all these wonderful insights that hopefully you'll provide, it will um, we will have a consultation uh, during the UN multi-stakeholder forum uh, in May and then we will provide the report during the ECOSOC high-level political forum in July. So we are um, uh, waiting for your participation at empowerment.org discussion. Um, thank you so much Lucinda and I know the time is short, it's 12, but with your permission and with Michaela's and Amira permission, I will take one question for each of you uh, so we can uh, you know um, be respectful also to all our attendees and thank you so much for being in such a big number um, over time with us so for a question specifically for Lucinda is um, uh, happy to hear from you amazing WIPO work. Our focus is on innovation and manufacturing, working with rural areas, groups, and we would like to be involved in the gender and sustainable goals. How we can find more information about rural women uh, and what WIPO um, uh, work focus on that area. Um, a compliment for you, Lucinda, your work is phenomenal. <laughs> and uh, thanks for the great um, uh, activities. Um, so uh, on rural women, Lucinda, and um, uh, specifically for Amira and Michaela, a question on how do you make sure that women and girls connect with the right role models, coaches? I think that personal, personality plays an important role. Also, I think that women should support each other more. In your experience, why are women hesitating to help other women sometimes? And this is a very great question from Laura. Um, I know, Amira, you, you touched a little bit upon that, but if you 
can speak about this in more details. I think this is something that was repeated several times throughout the question. So Lucinda, we'll start with you. And also if you can kind of uh, provide the, the final thoughts at this point, um, unfortunately we'll not be able to, to take any other question. It will also be very uh, uh, grateful, appreciated. Thank you, Diana, and, and certainly thank you for that uh, comment from the participants and the compliment, which I will pass on to my colleagues who are the ones doing the, the great work in that area. Um, in terms of rural women and agriculture, it's really interesting, actually. The issue of agriculture and its connection to food security uh, and nutrition is, of course, a core element of SDG 2 and, and of SDG 5 in the, among the, the 2030 agenda. And WIPO has taken this up this year. We produce something called the Global Innovation Index, which is a, a produced by WIPO's Chief Economist Division and in, in collaboration with INSEAD and Cornell University here in New York. And this year, 2017, the theme of that Innovation Index is agriculture and agribusiness and the role of innovation in supporting uh, agricultural industries uh, from large-scale industries through to subsistence and, and very small-scale industries around the world. And interestingly, also, WIPO has, has recently published a book on the informal economy uh, in developing nations, which is looking at small-scale industries and informal economies and the role of innovation, which also looks at that issue of, of rural uh, development and rural women. It, like, like any other international intergovernmental organization, of course, we work with our member states as our primary interlocutors. So the, um, the intellectual property offices of each country are necessarily our, our primary point of contact. Uh, but that said, um, we don't work just with government. We are very committed to capacity development and to outreach uh, to individuals, to innovators and creators and, and those, including rural women, of course, um, to to help to raise awareness of intellectual property and innovation and to help those people access the tools that we make available. For example, we have a patent scope database which has now over 59 million patent documents that are all available for free anywhere in the world um, that helps you to understand what's going on in the innovation system, who's patenting and, and doing that where. Now, at a grassroots level, the patent system is not particularly relevant. Um, but that information can be particularly relevant if there are collectives or if there are innovations that could be of use. And one way in which we try to reach out way beyond capitals and, and to more rural and, and external areas is through what we call our TISCs, our Technology and Innovation Support Centres. And there is an eTISC, so E-T-I-S-C uh, network. Um, currently there are over 459, I think, TISCs in countries around the world. Uh, so uh, to each of the participants, I would say if you're interested, look up and see whether your country has these. And they are rolled out upon demand. So if you can get a message to a policymaker who could make the demand for WIPO to provide a TISC, what we do is we work with local partners, with universities, with technology support centres. And these, these TISCs are available for the public to walk in to get training and information on how to use the resources that are available. We have what we call RD and ASPI, for example, which are enormous databases of scientific, medical, other information, technical information that is available for free in developing and least developed countries and which are freely available to provide that information to users dispersed throughout the world. Um, and what we do then is provide the training on how to access those resources and how to understand what they are. And then increasingly through mobile technologies, and this is where the ICTs is coming in, um, mobile coverage is extremely broad in countries in developed and developing countries around the world. And WIPO's website uh, has a wealth of materials about uh, the services, FAQs for individuals uh, working in different fields. We have a large traditional knowledge division that works with indigenous communities, many in rural areas in small island developing states and throughout the world, that works to help uh, individuals and small community groups to understand the intellectual property system, understand what their cultural, or creative and innovative resources are and then how to manage them, protect them and, and use them for their development. So um, the, the resources that they provide in their enormous uh, numbers of publications and studies, many of them very user-friendly um, and, and written in ways that are very accessible to the general public, are all freely available. We have a commitment to materials available for free online on our site. So through mobile access or through these TISCs 
uh, or through universities. We have a university program that works with many, many universities around the world to make our intellectual property training available. Um, information about all of those activities is available. At all. So hopefully we are over the government financial organization to try and reach out to women and rural women around the world to help them become IP smart. Thank you so and, much, and, Lucinda. Thank you. I appreciate thanks. this. And and um, um, it's a promise to everyone uh, who attends the webinar. Yes, we will share the recording. We will share the um, PowerPoint presentation. And uh, all these uh, um, resources were uh, address were were websites that uh, been mentioned by Amira, by Lucinda, by Michaela. Everything will be included. We will not be deleting anything and uh, promise also in the email that it will be a follow-up email to you we will include more specifically these resources so appreciate this Amira can you we go back to the infrastructure and to the selection and matching process yeah sure um, I, I was I think the question I was asked was uh, how do people connect with the right role models which is a really important question when you're working with groups of women um, or girls and you're really wanting people uh, to have role models that can really inspire them, that can be great support systems, um, and then can actually just act, they act as uh, guiders for girls as they develop their own skills. So uh, I will say lately there's no perfect answer for this. Um, it should be taken quite seriously and I think you really want to work with people in local communities um, that are doing things that are different and interesting and maybe outside the box of what girls are currently being seen or know as common um, common skills or traits right now and just really working with people to say this is a responsibility, it's a high responsibility um, and then working with matching people so that girls can really connect with other mentors and, and role models and actually be able to explore those areas with those people in in what is also facilitated as a comfortable and safe environment for girls to uh, have conversations and, and talk and network with people. And so um, I would really recommend it is different locally everywhere you go and it should be done on a very local level. I think that that's often the most impactful is when you see someone in your own community doing that um, and then providing role models and those, those people that are acting as guides with really, um, uh, with really got big guidelines that really direct how how they should act and how they can be the best uh, role model for other girls. Because um, sometimes we all need reminders and sometimes what's, what might be obvious to some is not always obvious to others. Um, and so I, I would say that and then also uh, it was mentioned very briefly like when, why women are hesitant to support each other. Um, I'll touch on this really quickly but in, in much of my work around the world and with uh, leaders that I've met everywhere um, it's often come up that in certain parts of the world, this is this is often one of the saddest points is that uh, women are not always able to help each other, uh, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's um, at home, whether it's you know in the community, uh, because we are often in in situations where we are working um, uh, working hard to achieve our goals, uh, sometimes we're often pitted against each other. Um, and someone's success might mean another person's not success. Uh, and this is really the, the mentality that I would love to combat with other women and how we, we really want to make sure that we can uh, disseminate what is, what is thought of in this sort of way um, and really foster an environment where we can see that each one of our success is each other's success and really foster communities um, and culture that really helps emphasize this. Uh, so while I wish it didn't happen, it does happen. Um, and I really want to work with women so that we're able to continuously sharing and providing um, opportunities for each other to really succeed both in ICT but in our everyday lives. Thank you so much, Amira. Thank you. Uh, Michaela, back to you for the final thoughts. Thank you again for, for the question. Uh, basically, if we speak about role models uh, within Girls Go IT program, I would um, actually mention three types or groups of role models that we have in Girls Go IT. First of all, as mentioned, and the most important is the fact that, um, as you met Paraskovia and Valeria, um, two of Girls Go IT ambassadors. 
And um, apart from that, our mentors and trainers uh, within Girls Go IT program are carefully selected and they represent actually young professionals, um, very close to the age group of our participants, which is 16 to 20 years old. So they can actually role model by being um, very understanding with what are the needs of program participants. And just a few years back, our mentors and trainers were also young people who were um, on, the, on the break of choosing their career and understanding what uh, should they do and how should they do next. Nevertheless, important and another very important group of role models that, that, we, that we have and promote in Girls Go IT program are parents. We understand very much the importance of parents in encouraging young women and girls in, in, in their career choice, uh, in their studies. Um, there is a, an influence uh, which we under, understand from surveys that we, we ran and program evaluation. We make sure that through help of surveys and focus group meetings in, in all program regions, we meet parents and we actually get their opinion on how uh, the program should be developed. And we also assess the change in the attitude of girls' parents towards ICT and technologies. We are trying to shape uh, the minds of girls in terms of understanding that technologies, ICT, are not only for men. Everyone which, uh, who is passionate can, can do it. And also we are trying to shape the mentality of parents to, to support um, their girls if, if they have that passion. That's, that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mihaela. And um, I promise not to ask any questions, but I just want to um, read one comment because I thought it's so important um, and, and relevant. And uh, thank you for work with girls with disability, which is part of our mission, empowering and inclusion for persons with disabilities. It was a comment from South Africa. So um, we, we often uh, um, kind of you have these uh, specific groups that look to be engaged and uh, um, don't have any opportunity. So here is a recognition of your work, Mihaela. Thank you, dear panelists, to all of you and each of, <laughs> and every one of you. It was a, a great pleasure to have you today with us. Um, we appreciate your time and your efforts to, to be here. And um, it's just, uh, you know, uh, to address everyone, happy International Girls in ICT Day. The challenges are sti still here, but you see through the, our common work, we are doing our best from each organization aside to lead, to share, to inspire, to give us educational and training for girls and young women to improve their employment opportunities and carry impact across generation. So let's just give an action of call to embrace women leadership, to rise for equality and rise our voices for change. And hopefully that every year the data will be changing only um, in a better side. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Have a good day. Have a good afternoon. Appreciate your, your, your spending time with us. And as usually, see you in the next webinar. Goodbye.